It always amazes me how people stand with something that's good. It's good. Yet, if you don't agree with them, they they're, fall into the most despicable insults to people that don't agree with them, Bobby. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm such a good person because I stand with this. Oh, wait, you don't agree with me? Then you're a no good, rotten, dirty son of a... You know what I, I mean? It's amazing how... Our most tolerant are so freaking vile in their hate. It drives me nuts. And Oberman's the top of the book, top of the key. Whatever. Yeah, and, and there's this saying that I really do believe, and I think that it's becoming more and more evident. The right hates what the left stands for. The left hates who the right is. That's a big difference. I'll say that again. The right hates what the left stands for. The left hates who the right is. That means people like, Nuts like Olbermann, Chapman, AOC, they hate people who don't disagree with them. Not their stances, not their ideology. They hate them. Olbermann is hateful. He hates anyone who doesn't agree with his view on this country. Uh, But then he puts out dogs, so he's a nice guy. Bah! Um, The worst person this week, Paul. What is that? Yeah, so this was fascinating. Last week was just a really a home run for the woke. You had Bomani Jones get opportunity number four and just failing as hard as anybody could ever fail on TV. HBO put this guy after John Oliver and said, hey, we know you're not very good. We know nobody likes you. We know you have no TV viewers, but you could probably maintain somewhere between maybe 70% of Oliver's ratings and you're following him directly for only 30 minutes. Nope. This guy lost 80% of John Oliver's viewers going directly after him for only 30 minutes. So you have Bomani, you have Olbermann begging for a job, you have Chapman saying somebody's dead on air who's working right across from him in the same studio, and you have L. Duncan sort of creepy moments. So I wanted to ask the Twitter followers, who's the biggest loser last week out of those four? And as expected, Olbermann overwhelmingly won. I I think this guy is sort of just the de facto woke loser of this generation. But Dan, I got to say, if I were voting, I'd go Bomani because what this guy's doing, just failing so hard time and time again, is actually quite impressive. I've never seen anything like this. You put this guy on after this guy's followed Stephen A., John Oliver, Dan Lepitard. It doesn't matter. You put him on, viewers tune out immediately. He's that hate among viewers. One of the more pathetic media careers I've ever covered. Yeah, I would go L. Duncan. I, 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 I'm not going to lie. I have two kids, my daughter and a son. They're older now. They're in their 20s. And if, if I was told that, hey, um, Sister Geraldine wants to talk to your daughter about whether she's a girl and wants to talk to your son, I'd be like, hey, look, Sister Geraldine needs to, you know, needs to get the hell out of a, I don't want teachers. I have a, t- a daughter that's a teacher. She's actually a teacher. You think she wants to have these conversations? Yes, no. You think you think teachers want and to I do got the, I got you know, the text. You know I got I mean? the text. And I thought this was pretty funny after I posted that poll. The text says, Bomani, Rex, and Keith Olbermann are always lame. We know that. However, L. Duncan jumped onto the scene out of nowhere, showed us who she is, and now we got to watch her around our children. That's a pretty good point. If you got to watch L. around your children, maybe she does deserve the quote-unquote woke loser of the week. 